Hey guys, this is Simon with ToughTrader.com and Trade and Perform Coaching. And uh, we're doing a trade review for ES and, and NQ uh, for the day, along with a couple of other uh, um, a couple other charts. But the primary focus is on ES. And again, I posted a chart earlier today on the Stock Twits and Twitter stream. And you'll see there where we have gone over what an open drive hire looks like. So uh, I wanted to cover the open drive. I wanted to cover how we handle trading it in the room and what it looked like kind of from the beginning of, of this really very powerful move to the upside and um, how, what you could have done to both capture that trade and protect yourself against shorting it, right? So uh, these open drives higher have become more common in the last couple of weeks. And uh, so let's learn. Let's go learn. Let's go become a better trader. Remember, we're always trying to make the same goal, right? Which is we want to identify what we did poorly on one day, make it our goal to do it better the next day, and we want to identify what we did well, right, so that we can move forward and uh, improve and recreate what we did well, improve what we did poorly, identify our where we are in our process, right, of each individual trade, and then get better and better and better over time. That's how you become a professional trader. That's how you make a boatload of money trading. So let's get started. Before we get started, a quick disclaimer. Uh, past performance is not indicative of future results, and this is for educational purposes only. I'm sharing my trade plan with y'all in hopes that you'll become a better trader. And um, everyone, everyone can learn how to trade. You just have to follow a process. So let's jump in. Um, first, so when you start the day, uh, as part of the uh, idea behind how we're using the member room and um, helping people hopefully learn more and more about how to trade, right? Um, you'll see last night, this is the Twitter stream, and you'll see last night I posted, let's get down there really quick, see if I can find it without taking up too much uh, time. Here's all the charts from today. Here comes the chart from last night. And what you'll see, ah, there it is, I posted. So this is 22 hours ago, if we take a closer look at this, and we get the exact time, this is 4.53 p.m. on September 10th. I said, many trend days, so this is Sunday evening, right? Many trend days up have begun looking like this. Four days of energy build. Would un be unusual to get that on a, it would be unusual to get that on a Monday, but then I pr uh, proceeded to say is, uh, um, now we need to go from, so how would we figure that out, right? And you're seeing I'm posting here. We're looking for a gap, strong tick, first five minute bar closing at the high or closing below the high of that five minute bar, right? And again, a m note to the members, you should have that list written down and know exactly what your checklist looks like going into the day. So we already knew we had a trend day up uh, possibility or for those European traders coming in Sunday night. That told us two things. First of all, we didn't want to be short, right? First thing that we knew is we didn't want to be short when there's a possibility of a trend day. And secondly, we wanted to get long if we could. But for me, I'm a, I'm a contra trader, meaning I'm, I'm contra trading within the context of the larger trend. I'm looking for pullbacks to get long. That opportunity came in NQ later in the day, and I am I am not a chaser, right? I think chasing really kills trading accounts. I understand it's nice to capture these trend days up. I'm all in favor of those who could. So uh, to begin with, uh, let's jump into the film real quick, the game film, if you will. And here we go. And you can see here we're going through the market preview. Let's get to, there we go to the open. So what you'll see here at the open is that I'm pointing out immediately You'll see me drawing on the chart here. And basically what I'm telling in the room is like, look, there's the first five minute bar. We've closed at a high. What are the positives of that five minute bar? That's a perfect gap up bar, right? We gapped, it was strong. The tick is at positive 1000, right? And you have a choice to make here. You can buy the close of that five minute bar and very simply put a stop below the low. It's a pretty straightforward method, right? You have a defined risk, you have a defined stop, and you can adjust your trade size. Hopefully, if your account's sufficient in size and you're trading a well-funded account, you can place an appropriate stop and adjust your trade size to adjust your risk for what your overall trade plan calls for, right? Now, I want to make be clear on that, right? A guy who's trading 10 million has a different risk parameter than a guy who's trading 100,000 who has a different risk parameter from a guy who's trading 10,000, right? So for me, and then the last piece is, does the trade fit into your psychology? I prefer to buy pullbacks for rotations back up, there's nothing wrong with buying an open a potential open drive higher as long as you can define risk. 
it's everything guys process builds internal confidence right you can have confidence in your process because you do it over and over again and you're able to see the outcome or the results right and on a repeated basis so number two what you'll notice here look at NQ the markets are in alignment right so let's go back over that and look how you can see right out of the gate right there's the opening prints both NQ is, is above its first five minute low and ES is above its five minute low now we had one more challenge here this was a white zone and normally we would be looking to fade the white zone immediately in the room I said hey there's just no shorting this morning it's off the table this is a strong chance that we're going to be running higher that's a 1330 tick um, you'll see a lot of traders and you'll see a lot of talk about people talking about filling the gap or um, um, uh, taking the short for the gap fill the bigger the gap in ES this was a, approximately a 12 point gap up the bigger the gap the lower the odds that you're going to fill that gap secondly if you don't fill that gap in the first hour you have low odds of filling that gap at all that day right and so by taking this trade short here by trying to fill the gap yes it works sometimes that's true but not coming off of four days of balance again I'm going to show you this picture I'll show you right here on the um, volume profile chart if I can get it actually why don't we just use the TPO chart here really quick I have it here somewhere but we'll just use the TPO instead let me clear off all my notes off this chart and the chart locked up <laughs> of course it did so I'll bring it up as soon as it unlocks we'll give it just a minute right uh, so I'll cover that in just a second let's go back to the trade film let's see if I can move this at all Wow, I love TradeStation after hours sometimes, I gotta tell you. So let's jump back over to here we go. Let's see if this works. Absolutely nothing's working on TradeStation. Lovely. So let's roll forward. So notice first of all, if I'm short here, you should be really nervous. Look at NQ taking off. What I'm pointing out is both these markets are in sync right remember so if you remember Friday's trade review I noted that ES was strong and Q was incredibly weak both these markets are incredibly strong and here's what I was hoping for I gotta tell you I was hoping for right out of the gate that NQ would show some weakness give a stutter step in ES and give me a chance to grab NQ for a long side trade it just didn't give it to me right so understand that doesn't upset me in my process because my process is to buy even a reasonable pullback out of the gate for push up it just did not materialize so I'm not upset by that at all it's simply not a big deal to me right so let's roll over here a little bit and now you're gonna see three bars up this is classic open drive higher both markets are in sync now NQ is gonna have a nasty little surprise you'll notice there's no white zone above right and you'll note the note that I put out to members note no clear resistance above right we are past the last piece of resistance this is the most recent swing high all-time highs are sitting just above there's no reason for us to be short and watch how that benefited us right so we're not sitting here there's no debate for us there's no short right we're just simply looking to see if they'll give us a rollback for an entry and we're looking for negative 600 tick which by the way we never got okay now I'm going through and covering so what I'm covering is in here for members is what it looks like when it rolls back in and what it looks like when it doesn't roll back in and that's one of the benefits I'm going to skip over that but that was one of the t reasons we were able to read so clearly that we had an open drive higher that was intact there we go now we're back to the markets you'll see we we ran right into 2481 that was approximately a 20 uh, 20 point up move from Friday's close notice that NQ did have a white zone up here and it runs right into the white zone at 5997 to 6000 we did not short it we were looking for longs today we I, my assumption was that we would close near the high of the day now if you look here in a minute so what you're seeing is now that I'm looking for a way to get long you'll see I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out look I hope we pull back to 2479 um, over here in NQ I'm hoping we pull back a little bit so I can find a way to get a long trade on and you'll see we pulled right back to 2479 and you'll see we just didn't have a very heavy negative tick here now this is very interesting over here on NQ notice that ES has rolled over but NQ has come all the way back to the mid of the day right so we have a a, a bit of a divergence here right NQ is weak ES is very strong and I'm gonna start working 
and NQ long and looking for responsive buyers from this 59.83.84 area all the way back to the back of this white zone. That is my plan is to slowly scale in because I'm not sure where it's going to turn but I'm pretty confident we're going to turn. There's just no heavy negative tick and my stop's going to be the low of the day, right? So those are my parameters. I'm going lighter than normal because it's a wider range than usual and that's and that's key, right? I already know the range is expanded to the upside, right? I know I might need a little bit wider range than normal and that's how I decided to handle that trade. So you're going to see notice that we've pushed back past the 50, past the 60. Now realize some people are using ultra tight stops in here. Watch what happens to these guys. Here, let me play this forward. Well, look at this. Look at the PL they left on the table because they didn't understand where the support and resistance was on this. Right? If you're just looking at the 50 retrace, right, you're thinking, oh, it's going to come to the 50, maybe not to the 60, and then you discount the white zone and Globex low right behind it. Right? You had to give them permission. I, obviously, since I was long here and all the way through here, I didn't want them to come all the way back. I'd prefer that it just came back to the 62 and took off. But what I don't want is a stop. I want to structure the trade so that I take advantage of the opportunity they're giving me, right, without allowing them, without allowing them to take my money away. So look at how we handle this trade. The goal, my goal to the upside was 59.90. Watch when they pull back. Watch how it pulls up. Now everyone gets shaken out here, right? This is a natural rotation in ES. If you'll go measure this, this is a natural day trading rotation. We take advantage of this all the time to the downside for swings back up, but you got to allow them to shake and bake a little bit on this trade. Then watch the push back up. And then you'll see at the end of the day, they rolled it back down and then we closed up, I think back near the highs. There you go. We sure did that 59.90. So we never got an opportunity in ES. It just never gave the trade entry that we were looking for. I was looking for something similar to what happened there, there on NQ. But again, notice, this is NQ is a great example of why I just don't chase without a proper rotation down, right? Market right here looks great, right? Looks like we're going to continue higher. No problem. You'll notice I already have the 5060 retrace. I'm already looking for it. I'm already drawing that 5060 retrace back, looking for my entry, right? Now watch the rotation forward. And I highlighted it right there. I said, look, here, let's see if I can find that again. Right there. See, I highlight it and I go, Look guys, this is what I'm looking for is that 50 retrace, right? There's the 50 retrace and I understand we can push behind it. We do push behind it. I'm adding. I'm scaling some from what I added behind there right in this area and now I'm looking to scale as we push up. That's how a professional trader does it, right? Not tracing ES. I realize it went up all day. I'm looking for, for the market that gives me the opportunity, not forcing my trade. Um, and my re response to those who say, well, look, you should have gone long ES because it went up all day long. And my question is this, if NQ can make a retracement like this, right? And the, if the client, if the client, the, the, the trader bought the market up here, what in the heck was he going to do when we came back for a 50 retrace, right? He would have no choice but to bail out of that trade. And remember one of the guiding principles that I have in trading, I want to trade where others are desperate to get out and I can get in comfortably and I have a good chance of forcing them to pay me, right? You have no pullback in this area over here, right? So I don't see how you're going to force anyone to do anything for you. As a matter of fact, if you chased up right into the 15th minute of the day, right? Notice that you made by, if you chased up and bought here at 24.79, right? Notice that by the 10.30 in the morning, you had really not made very much money. Your maximum favorable, um, your maximum favorable move up was from 24.79 to almost 24.82. There's nothing wrong with that if you got it right. But what most guys are trying to do is we get that stretch out. You really want to see, let tick come back into the negative territory, grab the broader market when they're when they are, are displaying a willingness to give a little weakness, and then you can get a good contrast. Is there broader market weakness? You can do your analysis of the S&P 500 against the broader market and then make a good trading decision. You can look for key areas where you know you're going to have institutional help on NQ for, as an area to take a trade and make money. And when you do that and you're patient, this is how the market rewards you with a push all the way back, 
then all the way up. I think that's just totally cool. And again, I skipped the white zone short on NQ. This was not a day I was going to bet that we had an NQ drop, right? Uh, specifically because ES was so strong. And what I was hoping for again was a push down on NQ out of the gate to get the push up. It didn't give it to us, right? So um, go through the highlights again. We knew from last night and from market structure that we had a potential open drive higher, trend day up day. Number two, we stayed disciplined to our principle. We gave aggressive traders the options of going, hey, if you're willing to take the stop off that first five minute bar, get long. Only one, one or two traders in the room took advantage of that upside trade. No one got run over on the short side. And I'm pretty sure a couple guys were able to take advantage of that NQ long and get paid on that rotation back to 59.90 which is really, really cool. So we cover this and much, much more in the room. If you'd like to learn how to become a consistent professional trader, email me at tradeandperform at gmail.com. I'm happy to extend you a uh, five-day visit to the room. And um, the room's $95 a month. I'm very upfront with that. I think it's simply the best deal of any trading room out there. You get ES, NQ charts, CL, GC. Oh, no, we don't do GC anymore. Uh, CL, the bond. And uh, let's see, I have one more in there. Euro, the bond, ah, and oil. So uh, anyways, give me a call plus the mentor room. Open majority of the day, certainly all the morning and, mo and much of the afternoon. And uh, I'm looking forward to this breakout bringing us and paying us very, very nicely going forward. Uh, market's trading up right now. Looks like about 2486.75 in the after hours. Uh, remember, markets can trend for a long, long time. Wait till you see a trade below at least the prior day's low before getting bearish on ES and NQ is my, uh, is my thought pattern that I follow, and it keeps me out of getting into any kind of trouble on the short side of the market. Y'all have a good night. Talk to y'all soon.